über Millionen Jahre hinweg durch die Verwitterung von Gestein und dem Aufbau organischen Materials entstehen sie. Böden sind die Grundlage für unsere Lebensmittelproduktion. Every soil is so different. You know, location, consistency, and there, there, there's no two soils alike. And even in, in fields, you know, it varies from one corner to another corner. You know, soils have uh, antidepressants in them, in the soil, bacteria, and you know, it's full of life. Kann man Felder bewirtschaften, ohne das Bodenleben zu destabilisieren? Yeah, try and do as little as possible. Work with nature. Under the right conditions. When it's wet, don't drive on it with a big tractor. Don't try and beat the soil into submission, whether you got heavy clay or, or sandy soils. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what's happening now with bigger tractors, bigger machines, faster moving machines. Uh, we're all trying to do more speed, less care. Doch trotz vorsichtiger Bodenbearbeitung werden hier auch Maschinen genutzt. So that is a really good machine. It's not as harsh or as violent. I'd rather not use it and do everything by hand, but I can't. As you can see, it goes like that. That's why I cut parsnips that are that long. Statt mechanisch wird momentan vorherrschend chemisch für hohe Erträge gesorgt. Aber wie lange geht das noch? The fertility comes from the, the short-term um, chemical additive fertilizers. Not because of any long-term organic matter or long-term investment in the soil. Können stickstoffbindende Leguminosen eine Alternative zu Mineraldünger sein? Müssen wir auf Ertrag verzichten, um sie in die Fruchtfolge einzubauen? So instead of having three years of clover, I just put clover underneath. And other people I know have been talking about living mulches. They'll call them different things. And people have played with around with clover underneath, but it works. If you just have red clover, the benefit is something like there. Yeah, if you have a mix of five, it, it multiplies. You know, the more diverse your mix is, the more you put in. If you do it right and manage the clover, because the clover can be aggressive, but you can plant directly into the clover, no tillage. You can broadcast if you want, uh, but you can direct drill, depending on the equipment you have, into the ground. And you have the clover underneath, and you can do that every year with with you know you have massive biodiversity because you've got all the flowers and the and you don't get weeds you don't get arable weeds because you're not disturbing the soil so you just have clover and and I actually add weeds rare weeds to my crop because I want weeds because I want to feed the bees and the bugs so every year I can plant in the same field I've got nitrogen falling from the sky I've got clover making lots of nitrogen and I chop the straw it's this tall, so I harvest here, and I take the grain off, and then all that straw is chopped, and then you can broadcast the seed or direct drill into that stubble, we call it, the, 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 the tall mm -hmm. rubbish, and then mow it, cut it. And it's like a duvet of beautiful organic matter that slowly decays, and the wheat grows through it. Eine weitere Düngemöglichkeit ist die Verwendung von Holzhackschnitzel. Before I was a really mixed farm, 2,000 acres I think it was, so we had cows, beef, sheep, everything. And it was much easier to get fertility from those animals. And there is another farm in England here that has a vegan uh, certifica certification, so there's no animal inputs. And I, I think I'm going to be the second one in England. So how I create my fertility is with wood chip. Ta-da! Science says, oh no, you can't use wood chip because the, the carbon nitrogen is completely out of sync. It should be whatever, whatever ratio it is, and that doesn't come even near it. But you can see the plants, they are producing. There's the soil in the green strip around the trees, and because they've been undisturbed now for seven or eight years, and there's been grass and herbs, and also because we've added lots of wood chip in the last couple of years, those, those strips are definitely changing. Before, we would buy in pallet loads full of uh, Klaasman uh, uh, compost, you know, being shipped from Poland or God knows where, or even further, being made into a mix. A lot of carbon went into that and a lot of uh, energy went into producing it. Then the transport and the cost of it is phenomenal. Was passiert im Boden, wenn man pflügt? 
movement of soil, all the, all the top inch, two inches, that's where all your soil life is. And the soil is a very delicate balance between bacteria and fungi, and it's very complex as well. And if you plow or you do very inverting uh, cultivations, you turn it upside down and bacteria bounce back quite quickly. Fungi take about a year and then you do it again. Yeah, it's just so there's always an imbalance. So if you can not disturb the soil or as little as possible, you have a much better chance of having a very healthy soil. If you have a good fungal system in your soil, the, the root surface area of a plant increases by 700%. So you can imagine how vital a good fungal system is. If your whole crop fails, you've got a structural problem in your soil. What I have learned is you shouldn't be afraid of weeds. What you do want is a high diversity of weeds. If you just have, say, chickweed, you've got a very rich soil. If you have all sorts of docks, you know, you have a structural problem. Uh, so weeds are indicators of your soil health as well. Having a high, a big diversity of different weeds tells you you've got a well-balanced soil. Wieso wird Unkraut heute nicht mehr als Indikator geschätzt? Ab wann wurde versucht, den Nährstoffentzug gezielt auszugleichen? They didn't rotate with legumes in the medieval period. By about 1740 in the UK they start rotating with clover. And they did that for about 100 years. And then they said, oh, now we have chemicals, fertilizer, you don't need to rotate anymore. You can just use fertilizer. We don't need to rotate. And what happens? The soil dies. The, the soil's dead, of course. No organic matter. And so then by the 1920s, 1930s, the soil is dead. And along comes biodynamics and, you know, the beginnings of organics, whether you believe in the rest of the biodynamic or not. But, but that's the beginnings of organic, isn't it? And, and, and then the UK picks up from Germany. Um, organics and in the UK the Soil Association starts in the 1940s and now we have organic farming with its very strict rules about rotation. So here I'm coming and saying you don't need to rotate. What? You have to rotate or your soil will be dead. I said no, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to actually be more natural than organic. There isn't only one Bible, you know, one set of rules. I think you've always got to challenge the system a bit. So, but I'm having, I've had a real problem. So the association says, you, you're not organic. I said, I am organic. I'm not using chemicals. And they said, oh, your soil. You have to build your soil. I'm building the soil. The only thing that leaves my field is the grain. Everything else is chopped. So I'm sequestering carbon. It's all staying in the field. It's all being eaten by the worms. It's being drawn down into the soil. The clover's adding lots of good nutrients to the soil. I'm building the soil and I'm increasing biodiversity. I don't plow my fertility building lay into the soil. I'm not disturbing the soil. I'm, I'm inoculating my seeds with mycorrhizal powders. I'm, I'm actually really making healthy soil. So don't tell me I'm not organic, um, but I'm not legally organic in the sense that I'm not rotating. Every other box, they go tick, tick, tick. Ah, uh -huh, no rotation. Sorry, no organic. Ob bio oder konventionell, Wasser brauchen alle Anbauform. Zukünftig mit dem Klimawandel wird dies jedoch zum limitierenden Faktor für die Landwirtschaft. Durch Winderosion verlieren wir wertvolle Feinbodenbestandteile, die viel Wasser speichern können. Bäume bilden eine natürliche Barriere, die dies verhindert. Auch der Oberflächenabfluss bei Starkregen wird durch Bäume minimiert und trägt so zum Erhalt des Bodens, der Nährstoffe und des Wassers auf der Fläche bei. An heißen Sommertagen kann der Schatten der Bäume die Ackerfrüchte vor Trockenstress schützen. Since I make my beds quite early in the season, all the rain that does fall, that water will be captured in the bed and I don't cultivate after that anymore. I try not to, especially not very uh, aggressive cultivation. So you lose a lot of moisture. So if I start making my beds under the right conditions in say beginning of March, and I've only planted in April, May, that, that soil will not have been disturbed. And if you scratch the surface, even though it looks dry, there is moisture there. And what I have found as well, I have to start drilling deeper just to get to that moisture. With certain seeds that can be quite tricky because they don't have the vigor to come up. But uh, yeah, certain seeds you get away with just going a little bit deeper. We have learned, and we now do religiously, is when we plant, Loads and loads of wood chip around the base. Basically stops the soil drying out, stops it cracking. Because this is clay soil, it cracks. 
Die Erfahrungen der verschiedenen Höfe haben uns inspiriert, den Status quo der Landwirtschaft seit der Einführung des Mineraldüngers zu hinterfragen. Absolute Regeln lassen sich, aufgrund der vielen verschiedenen Faktoren eines jeden Hofes mit unterschiedlichen Größen, Böden und Subventionen, trotzdem nur schwer ableiten. Festhalten kann man jedoch, dass es in unserem eigenen Interesse liegt, die Bewirtschaftung der Böden als Ganzes zu verstehen und so viel wie möglich den natürlichen Prozessen zu überlassen. Vor allem eine stabile Balance von Bakterien und Pilzen in der Erde ist langfristig vielversprechend und leistungsfähig. Gleichzeitig sind Klee als Stickstoffdüngung und lokale Holzhackschnitzel als Humus eine vielversprechende Alternative zu tierischen oder synthetischen Düngemitteln. Klee hat nicht nur als Zwischenfrucht Vorteile, auch als kontinuierliche Unterfrucht kann es jedes Jahr Stickstoff fixieren und somit eine durchgängige Ernte von Getreide ermöglichen. Hierbei kann auf das Flügen verzichtet werden. Trotz des sehr weiten Verhältnisses von Kohlenstoff und Stickstoff ermöglichen zersetzte Holzhackschnitzel bei richtiger Dosierung eine Bewirtschaftung ohne Tiere und ersparen Düngertransporte. Vielfalt bringt Resilienz und somit robustere Felder, die dem voranschreitenden Klimawandel besser gewappnet sind. Unkräuter können helfen, den Boden dauerhaft zu bedecken, um ihn so vor dem Austrocknen zu schützen. Gleichzeitig können strukturelle Bodenprobleme mit Indikatorpflanzen erkannt und folglich gelöst werden. It's going to take much longer for the soil in the rows where the arable crops are grown to have a benefit from the trees. But all this is just too young. We want it all to happen tomorrow.